did she mention the baby? She's not here. She said something about uh, the couple that I'd sent to her, told her where to go. The actors and actresses have the essence of the characters inside themselves and over the series we have moulded the written characters to, to suit the essence of the real people. That's, and that's been very, very rewarding as you can imagine. The first thing that we did was cast it very, very well. I mean, it, it was originally a vehicle for Martin and uh, his part was crafted or moulded around him. Well, the character himself was well, very lucky to be able to just sort of make him out of clay in a way. When the first scripts were written by Dominic Minghella, uh, Martin's character was much gentler. He was a kind of rather bemused fish out of water who came from London to this community that uh, he didn't really understand. And on the page, he was baffled and was always kind of one step behind. And it was Martin who came up with the notion of making him very grumpy. So we sat down and Martin and we were thinking about what would be the most fun thing to do. And Martin said, I just want to play someone really grumpy and really horrible. And we were kind of, oh, OK, I'm not sure people are really going to like that. But OK, and then we embraced it and thought that would be really fun. Anyway. Oh, um, Miss Smith was about to join an Everson party downstairs. Well, why didn't you say so before, you imbecile? Show me. But our intention with this, initially, was to turn that on its head and have a small community united in horror at the GP that they've been allotted. Um, and that's so that, you know, the, the interest was in their, their reception of him and their reaction to him. And I, that's one of the bits that I still enjoy about it, is that he can't walk in the village without having something thrown at him. And he just clashes every time. I think it's Martin who makes it work because I think it's a really tough role for an actor to play that, to be able to be so unsympathetic to the general population, but at the same time, from everything that I hear from feedback from audiences just walking around Port Isaac or letters we get, they seem to see something in his character that we know's there, that he gets across, which he doesn't actually state, which is... I think, down to the power of his acting. Please wait. Please. Mrs. Tishel, police! So then we were shooting a sequence where he just ruined some poor girl's wedding <laughs> without a second thought. And I'm laughing now, which is wrong. <laughs> but that's, that's, the, that's the bluntness. And, uh, I find it funny, that level of dysfunction. <laughs> I mean, in real life, it would be a different thing, but it's not. So it doesn't matter. I find it funny that he doesn't like dogs, because I like dogs. But to me, it's someone not liking dogs. It's an idiot. <laughs> but it, it's been an immensely liberating experience. Which is quite interesting to me that he's changed over the years, that we've pushed him a bit, even a bit more, kind of, we push it each time that he gets a little bit more grumpy. Because that character evolved on the page with Dominic writing it, with yeah. Martin and myself and yeah. Philippa discussing the different drafts. We've all got a very common, clear idea of what that character's like. Uh, as, as regards the other characters, the character of Louisa was originally conceived as the good-hearted, simple, good-looking um, love interest in the village. And it was really through working with Caroline that we discovered these quirks. It was very small, there wasn't much in there really, but it was so much fun being here and playing opposite Martin. And, um, and then it sort of it evolved, a sort of chemistry between them, I think. What people? I don't know, stop asking inane questions! The thing that grounds me with what I love about my job is doing the scenes with Caroline, who plays Louisa, finding the level of dysfunction <laughs> and the torture, you know, we, the, using the givens that we know we actually adore each other and respect and uh, enjoy each other and then going uh, and turning it and making it not work and there, there aren't any angels or harps playing when they meet their car horns and crash sounds, you know, but I absolutely love acting those scenes with her. And action! Empty. Almost too empty. 
He must be somewhere else in the hotel. Where have they They've got two restaurants here, cellars, acres of ground? Well, well, Martin's amazing to work with. He's incredibly, you know, he's funny. He makes you feel very relaxed. It just, you know, the whole um, job to start with was just a lot of fun. And I was absolutely thrilled to be asked back to come and do some more. We knew for, of the end of episode series four that we had this baby to deal with and we were thinking oh my god normally it's just always been the relationship that's kept it has been bubbling under each episode and then we have to deal with it well, we've got to deal with it head on because we've got this baby and what are we going to do so that's been the biggest challenge and and actually it's been great because we've been able to start the martin and louise are off in a completely new place and we embraced that and thought let's just go with that and have them living together and they've got this baby that's going to bond them together forever so we can have some fun with their dysfunctional ways of dealing with this little baby. <laughs> there are new faces in this upcoming season of Doc Martin including Dame Eileen Atkins. I'm Martin's aunt and um, that's fun because I have to be a little bit like Martin so that's that's enormous fun. John Marquez returns in the new season as PC Joe Penhale. Um, I like the fact that he's, um, he's very committed to his job. He's very honest uh, most of the time. And he, um, I think he means well. He means well. He tries to do his, his best. It's just unfortunate for him that he's in a place where... Um, not many things happen, so he has to uh, he has to embellish things, you know. I think you know who I am, because <laughs> everyone knows who I am because of my neck collar. Mrs. Tishel, who I adore, Mrs. Tishel, but now she's going to come off for a moment, because <sighs> freedom. Filming her first scene, Martin and Selina and I, between us, decided that it would be amusing if this character had a crush on him, and that has um, developed over the 30-odd episodes that we've done to the point where at the end of this fifth series she becomes extraordinarily proactive in the pursuit of her um, carnal desires for Martin. The character's developed so beautifully, I mean, with her completely bonkers crush on the dog. She gets up to quite a lot of mischief, which I won't tell you about. Switch on the see. Somebody said to me, you will never laugh as much as you will laugh making Doc Martin. And they are absolutely right. I have never laughed as much as I have on this. It's always so nice to come back and do it again. It's the best job in British telly. The last good job. <laughs> We're left alone to make it. The lunatics have taken over the asylum. We have no interference. <laughs>